Well, really, we're talking about a replacement. Many people think it's going to be Harry Kane from mm -hmm. Spurs. What's interesting about that is Spurs, of course, now have a new manager. And what does that mean for his future at the club and Kane's future at the club? Ange Postacoglu taking over after a great run at Celtic. Before that, success in the J League. Uh, and before that, success at the international level with Australia. He's been hired, of course, by the Spurs chairman, Daniel Levy. Let's see what he had to say about his new manager and the man who will be taking over. Quote, Ange brings a positive mentality and a fast attacking style of play. He has a strong track record of developing players and an understanding of the importance of the link from the academy. Everything that is important to our club. We are excited to have Ange join us as we prepare for the season ahead. All right, for more on this, let's call on our colleague, James Ollie, who joins us now. Uh, okay, James, I want to get your reaction to the hiring here, but also what you're hearing from Spurs fans. Because on yesterday's show, we heard about a little bit of snobbery from Spurs fans when it comes to the Postacoglu hiring. Yeah, there's a little bit of that. But I think what this appointment is, is, is a reality check for Spurs as a club. Um, the last two appointments they made in, in, in significant appointments, really, in Jose Mourinho and Antonio Conte, the idea behind those two were essentially, we have the squad, we have the, we have the players, we need a winner to get us over the line. Richard Pochettino did everything in his five and a half years to take that club from where it was to a Champions League final, right to the brink, even almost winning the league one year, but they didn't win anything. And those appointments were with that thought in mind that this squad is good enough to go and now win trophies, we just need a manager to get us there. I think what this search has, has shown is that actually... <laughs> Although Antonio Conte lost his job over it, I think there's been a, a, an acknowledgement internally that a lot of what he was saying was right, that this squad isn't, you know, one step away from winning a Premier League or, you know, is going to get to the Champions League finals or even quarterfinals, semifinals on an annual basis. This squad needs uh, a new identity. It needs several new signings and it really needs a sense of purpose brought back into it because it just lost its way. Um, in the last year, 18 months. And um, I think from that point of view, Postacoglu is a good signing. Now, is he a big enough name to convince some of the sceptical fans to maybe dampen their uh, criticism of the ownership? Probably not. He's going to have to win some of them over. And of course, going back to, to, the, to the start of this conversation, really, is he a big enough name to keep Harry Kane at the club mm. long term? Because that's the million dollar question now Real Madrid are at the big. Million dollar question, hundred million dollar question. Stevie, if, if you're the new manager at Spurs and you can have a hundred million dollars to start your rebuild or keep Harry Kane for maybe just one year, what are you doing? You keep Harry Kane. Really? You cannot think for one second that Postacoglu is not going to get money. Whether Harry Kane stays or goes. He has to. And how are you supposed to entice a manager anyway without saying, look, we want to keep Harry? And we're going to give you money as well to, to fill around Harry Kane. And if you post to Coglu, you're off your mind if you want to take 100 million and think you're going to go and replace Harry Kane. And if you post to Coglu, the one thing that should be in his head and would be in mine is if I can do enough in this year, mm -hmm. because if sports fans think that post to Coglu or anybody else is coming in and within a fortnight they're going to start winning the Premier League or Champions League or anything, can forget that. This is going to take time. But if I'm Poster Coglu and I think, right, if I can get this club on the right track, Harry Kane will stay mm. next year. Everybody seems to think that if Harry Kane doesn't go this year, he'll go next year. But if Poster Coglu can get the team and the club in a position where it's going up the way, then there's no reason why Harry Kane doesn't go. Mm. James, uh, just real quick, I, I want to get, is this, is this realistic what Stevie's talking about, that they could keep Harry Kane and go out and spend and, and build to this team? I mean, the history doesn't suggest that. No, I mean, I don't think he's going to have huge money to spend. You've got to remember they've missed out on European football and that is a big blow for a club the size of Tottenham. Um, I mean, there are a number of players that they can sell, the so -so, uh, Winks, uh, Reggion, there's, there's probably five or six that you could trim from that squad who, who you'd be able to generate some money that way. Um, and obviously, given that they're not in Europe, they're going to be able to, to streamline that squad. They won't have the, the volume of games that they would have if they were in European competition. So they could generate money that way. Um, but I don't think he's going to have you know a, a huge amount there. And, and really, uh, look, I mean, I understand what Stevie's saying about the Harry Kane situation. You want, if you can keep a player of that quality for another year, you do it. But there is a part of me that also thinks 
I don't think he's going to sign a new contract. And if he's not going to sign a new contract, mm. can a club the size and the financial resources of Tottenham afford to let a player of that calibre go for nothing in 12 months' time? I think there needs to be a very adult conversation here with all parties, which is to say, Harry, are you going to sign a new deal with us? And if you're not, and we can get what we believe is a good market price for him, and they're talking about 100 million plus, and even though he's only got a year left. Jules, where do you land on this? Keep Kane or start the rebuild with Adam? I think it's a, it's a really good debate. I think James makes some valid points. The problem is, if you let Harry Kane go, suddenly the attack that was not a problem this season because he scored 32 goals in all competitions, 30 in the Premier League, becomes a problem as well because nobody will, nobody will replace. You can't, you can't sign anybody who will do what Harry Kane does. It will do. You can sign a straw. You can have Richarlison. But Richarlison will score. What's the highest that he scored? 12 goals, maybe, in the Premier League season at Everton? And that's it. So, suddenly, the attack also becomes a problem. You already have a problem at the back, like James explained nice, well. But now, the midfield is also a problem, and then the attack becomes a problem as well. I, I, I'm like Stevie. I would keep him. I would keep, even if that, that means for him to live on a free in 12 month time, at least that gives mm -hmm. you more time to prepare for the after-hurricane, the post-hurricane era and go and look for someone, a young, maybe a young striker that maybe right now you can't afford because you need to sign a goalkeeper and all those defenders that James mentioned. And really, th there would be no money for a striker. So what would you let Harry Kane go? And even if you can reinvest that money, of course, I think it would be too much, too much work on the team, too much rebuilding. Keep Kane and see what happens. If he doesn't want to sign a new deal, he goes on a free in 12 months time, but at least you would have had time to prepare for it. Just look at Bayern Munich. If you need any proof of what happened, mm. if Bayern Munich can't can't replace somebody, what chance has Tottenham got? I, I, listen, I, I, I to, to, the first thing Jules said there, I thought it sums this up perfectly. This is a really interesting debate because you can see both sides, and even as I'm sitting here, I, I'm a, a little bit torn. Truth be told, I don't think it's Postecoglou's decision at all, one way or the other, right? But let's play that game, shall we? The, it, it, it's his, he's going to talk to Harry Kane and, and, and he has to, 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 to make that decision about his, his transfer fund. Um, right now, I'm thinking let him go. I, I, first of all, I, I don't think Daniel Levy is going to open up the push strings to, to the extent that Postecoglou desperately needs. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if 100 million adds to that, then, then all the better for it. Now the question then becomes, can he build a side? Can he, can he or, or start that building process um, knowing that Harry Kane is going in a year, or is he willing just to kind of do without from now, maybe take some hits on the chin early on? Uh, Steve, Stevie mentioned Bayern Munich. I would look at Manchester United and Eric Ten Hag. How he made a like, difficult start to the season, Ronaldo on his way out, forcing his way out, but he was able to turn that club around without their... their, their, their so they're leading goal scorer from, from the previous season, in, in all honesty. So it's... It's a chicken in the egg. It, it, it really is. But a new manager should be, in theory, thinking but, about the future more than the uh, short but, term, uh, right? you, but to, to that, no, yeah, but, but to that point is, but, can we sit here and say Postecoglou is going to do what Eric Ten Hag did? No, we, we can't. We just don't know. We, we, and I'm saying that we couldn't sit here this, this summer after, after the four-game start that Manchester United had and anticipate... How we are talking it's about, about a team relative. in need so of a relative. Hold yeah, on. It is relative. So they relative. didn't finish Hold top four. Hold on. They did, need did, a rebuild. I'm with, you. I'm with James. They need a whole back line, right? Okay. But they ain't going to... James said they need three. I agree. At least three. Now, the one thing that I'll guarantee you is they will not be able to go out and sign three players who absolutely you know are going to step into the Premier League and play because they have to be experienced campaigners who know what they're doing, and that costs you money. Mm -hmm. Money that they won't spend. So that means you have to rely on your coaching. Your, your, your coaching How much staff. better can he make this team, then, if you're not going to... No, I'm, you've got to rely on your coaching staff and, and your scouting staff to go and find younger players. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to end up with the money to buy other players, you're going to have to get yourself into, into the top four and get into Europe. Because... <laughs> because they don't have any money because they, they finished eighth in the league. If you get rid of Harry Kane, you're going to finish eighth again. So you can't afford in the long run, you're talking about the long run, mm -hmm. you can't afford to let Harry Co Kane go this year because you need his goals in order to get you up the league into the top four, maybe. And then you get more money and then he goes and then you build from there. So, so, so you can't... 
it, it, it's, it all feeds into each other. Last word on this, Shaka. The, the thing is, I, I think Postecoglou is just such... Well, managing is, is such a, an, an uncertain science um, that you, you just don't know which side you fall. Like, Stevie drew the comparison to Bayern Munich, I drew the comparison to Manchester United to your initial question about whether he's the right man. We don't know. It, it, it's about what, how Daniel Levy sees the culture of this club. And as we said, we're not sure that Postecoglou is the man really to go out and change the culture of, of this club. We have sat here and sang the praises of Roberto De Zerbi for the job that he did at Brighton. But who could have anticipated that when he first arrived on their doorstep? Yeah, but he got left the team, though. He had, a, but, he had a proper team. But, but, he made that team a whole he lot did. better. But my, my point is, just given his CV, mm -hmm. nobody would no. say, you just wait to see what he does with this team. No, nobody, it's such an uncertain science. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.